In this video, we will create the application.cfc of the whole website. Now, because I want Confusion to execute this file each time a request is made to the website, I will define it at the root level of the application. So back in Confusion Builder, I will now right click on the root folder of my application to define a new Confusion component at that location. Of course, the name of that new component is application with a capital A. The output is false and now I click on finish. So you see that the application.cfc component has been created at the root level of my application and that the CF component tag has already been generated by Confusion Builder. I'm now ready to define the first property of my application using here a CF set tag. And the first property that I will define is the name of the application. Now, to define the name of the application, I must give a value to the this.name variable. You cannot choose the name of the variable here. It has to be the this.name variable defined in the application.cfc. This is predefined in the Cofusion language. And the name that I will give to my application is hdstreet website. I save my application.cfc. Now this is a very important step because by naming your application you will make the Confusion server able to tell your application apart from the other applications hosted on the same server and thus enabling the application scope. Now to see the effect of that line of code I need to change one little thing in the Confusion administrator. So let's right click here on the Confusion server and I launch the administrator right here. I of course have to log on to the administrator and once logged in I return to that debugging and logging section in the debug output settings page and at the bottom of the page I will select one additional checkbox which is this one. So here I ask Confusion to add the application scope to the debug output. I will submit my changes and before returning to Confusion Builder and run a page, there is one more thing that I want to show you here. It's in the memory variables page. You see that the application variables have a default timeout of two days and a maximum timeout of two days as well. So let's return to the code and let's take any page of the application and run the page here. Now in the debug output you should see one more scope here which is the application variables and you see that the application has a name it is HD Street website right here. Now let's return to Confusion Builder to define a second property of my application and this time I will use a second CF set tag and I will define the this dot application timeout variable and I will make it equal to the create time span function. You see that this function takes four arguments, the number of days, the number of hours, of minutes and of seconds. And I will define a time span of two hours, so zero days, two hours, zero minutes and zero seconds. This means that if no request hits my application for two hours, the application will shut down and all the data in the application scope will be destroyed, thus freeing some space in the memory of the server. The next property that I will define in the application.cfc will have a direct impact on our code. So let's create another CF set tag to define this time the this dot data source property of the application and I will make that equal to HD street. This means that I make the data source attribute of the CF query tag optional in my application. If I omit this attribute when using the CF query tag, it defaults to the value specified here by the data source property of my application. Of course, it is always possible to override that default setting by specifying a data source attribute locally on a specific CF query. Now that I have defined this property, I can safely remove the data source attribute from the CF query tags that I used in my application. To do so, I go to the search 
menu of Cofusion Builder and I take this first comment here, search. I will search for data source equal HD street. And I will hit the replace button here. You see that it has found 13 matches for data source equal HD street. And I want to replace it by something empty. So I remove everything that is in the width field of this box. I will click on preview to see what will be changed. So you see that in the events service.cfc, it found two matches for data source equal HD street. And you can see here that that data source equal HD street will be replaced by a space, by an empty string. Same thing here at the bottom. So I will click on OK. It replaces everything. Let's take a look in the component. Let's take, for example, the event service here. And you see here on the CF query that the data source attribute has been removed from all the CF queries of that event service.cfc. And it's the same in the other CFC. So I will save my application.cfc, browse the agenda page, and you see that it still works because I'm now using the data source attribute that I defined in application.cfc instead of a data source attribute that I define on each CF query. So that makes the code a little bit easier to write. And also, if I want to change the data source one day, I can change it at one single location instead of hunting the data source attribute of each CF query throughout the entire application. Let's return to ColdFusion Builder to add one more property to the application.cfc. So I need another CF set right here. And this time I will define the this dot custom tag path property of the application. This allows me to define the directories that I want to use as custom tag repositories in my application. So remember that in the application, we have this custom tags directory that already contains one file that I use as a custom tag. Now I will define this directory as a location for custom tags. To do so, I will use the expand path function of call fusion. And I will specify the directory that I want to use as a custom tags location. And it is the CF training slash custom tags directory of the web root of cold fusion. Now the expand path function is used to convert a relative path in its absolute path equivalent and vice versa. So in this case, I'm on a Mac, CF training slash custom tags will be converted to slash applications slash cold fusion builder 2016 slash cold fusion slash C fusion slash WW root and so on. If you are on a Windows computer, it will be converted to C program files, Cold Fusion Builder 2016, and so on. Now that I have done that, I can safely save my application.cfc file, and I can replace the CF module tags that I have used here by a CF underscore front tag. So I will select this piece of code here and return to search and search. And you see that by default, what is selected is automatically added here to the containing text field. So I will search for that text and I want to replace it by a CF underscore front tag like that. Now I will hit the preview button to check if it's okay. So if I replace this by CF front and then title equal HD street, you see that I have one extra space here. So I will hit back and remove the space that I have added here. Let's preview that again. Yes, this is much better. You see, I have only one space between CF front and title. So let's hit OK. And you see that now I use the CF front tag instead. Of course, I need to do the same here at the bottom of the file. So I need to change that ending CF module. So I select it, go back to search and search. So it is automatically filled here in the first field. I hit replace and I replace that by close CF front like that. I hit preview. You see it occurs 10 times on the entire website and I click on OK. So it changes 
that in the agenda.cfm but also in the other pages. Let's take for instance directory.cfm. You see that I'm now using CF front and NCF front here. And if I run that page, well it still works because in the application.cfc I have defined that custom tags directory as one of the possible locations to store custom tags. So with those small examples, you can see already the power of the application.cfc file. Only four lines of code here that allows me to specify some important properties for my application. In the next video, we will write some methods in the application.cfc component and you will see how we can handle special events in our application lifecycle.